Before we get started on today's video, I want to announce a few things regarding this series. First of all, I'm going to be changing the name of this series from Cinemation to Animated Cinema. If you have been following my community posts or social media, you probably already know the reason why this is happening. But to those of you who don't know, go read it for yourself, either pause the video and read this, or go check it out on my community tab and read it there. However, that change will only happen after this video in terms of the intro, outro, and how I decide to advertise this series from this point and going forward. Second, I know I said these videos will be spoiler free, but honestly, I don't like restricting myself like that because it can make my videos come off as underdeveloped and I wouldn't be able to talk about important key aspects of the film. Yes, I do target these videos towards people who have not seen these movies yet in order to maybe be a little persuasive on their decision if they should go see it in theaters so the companies can make money and make more timeless masterpieces in the future. However, by the time I am done making these videos, most people have probably already seen the movie and are probably not looking for a video that is strictly spoiler free. That is why I am going to include segments in these videos where I give warnings for spoilers ahead of time by showing these cards and giving people a certain time frame in the video to skip to. This is so I can make these reviews not only a little freer range for myself, but I can talk about the most important aspects of the movie now that I have the right plan. With all of that said, enjoy today's video. Now, before you start typing in the comments saying, and this is not an animated movie, this is live action, let me explain and state the fact that Strays is a live action slash CGI hybrid film that focuses on the CGI dogs for 95% of the movie. And if you are familiar with how that style works, you will understand through a lot of expressions and movements these dogs have a lot of the time. Now the team behind this movie did use real dogs, which made it easier to create their models and animate them in 3D. So yeah, Strays does count as an animated movie, and I'm going to review it right now. Going into Strays, I did have mixed feelings. On one hand, the concept of it looked pretty decent with a dog named Reggie, voiced by Will Ferrell, wanting revenge on his lowlife owner Doug for abandoning him. While on the way, his new friends show him how good life can be as a stray, being that he doesn't have an owner to give him commands. A plot like that can sound interesting to anyone, but then there is a big factor that went into marketing this movie, and that was the fact that it is rated R, and they make that very clear in the trailers, because I swear, every 10 seconds, you can hear an F-bomb or some other curse word just for the sake of comedy. I was hoping that this movie wouldn't just be another one of those, hey, it's an animated movie that's not for kids, let's just fill the script with f-bombs and sex jokes instead of making an actual interesting story for adults. This negative factor is a reason as to why adult animation has a bad reputation with some, which does suck to say, because there are so many adult animated series and movies out there that are incredibly underrated, and believe it or not, some of them can actually take the trope of cursing up a storm and make it work well. Take South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut as a good example. That movie holds a world record for the most profanity used, totaling at around 399 curse words. However, that worked for two main reasons. One, in order to have an NC-17 or X-rated film, one of the rules state that there needs to be a total of 400 swear words. Because of that, Trey Parker and Matt Stone worked their way around that and managed to throw 399 of them into the script in a super clever way. Some may think that it is very stupid, but this factor is actually utilized well because part of the movie's premise is depicting how young children can get exposed to stuff they're not ready for yet, and how parents blame the wrong thing and start a huge controversy, which is definitely what's not going on right now. Now, the strays utilize its crude humor in a creative way, 
No. No? I'm sorry to say that this is another one of those movies where the writers probably just decided to throw as much foul language they can into the script with just to make middle schoolers pee their pants laughing. Now, I can't say that this desert of humor is completely dry, as there are a couple of funny moments here and there, such as when Maggie talked about being replaced by her owner, and Reggie acting super innocent in some pretty naughty situations, which was very charming. And like I said earlier, the concept of this movie is very interesting at first, with Reggie wanting revenge on Doug for abandoning him, and slowly realizing how much of a toxic relationship he has been with him his whole entire life. Speaking of Doug, he is a pretty good antagonist for this movie. He's a definition of a hateable character, and this movie just wants you to hate him, which makes it so satisfying to see him get his comeuppets. However, the journey to get to Doug's feels like it takes forever. Probably because the movie will constantly slow down to tell a dirty joke, or you'll just have to put up with hearing Bug's annoying mouth. Speaking of Bug, oh my god, I hate this character. I'm not joking when I say that he might be one of my least favorite characters of all time. When he opened his mouth 98% of the time, I either rolled my eyes or facepalmed. Look, Jamie Foxx is a great actor, but I feel like all his lines in this movie were either written to either drop the f-bomb or make a sex joke every 5 seconds. There is one scene, and I mean only one good scene that Bug has, which I will get to when I eventually reach spoiler territory. But for now, let's talk about the CGI. For the most part, it's pretty good, and I like how you can tell that the dogs are not animated for the most of the movie, which again, might have thrown you off when this video title tells you I'm reviewing an animated movie. But then there are parts when you could tell it's animated, and that's not a good thing. For example, there are so many instances where they do a close-up shot on one of the dog's faces, and you could tell that their model is not rendered fully in this scene, and it's just pretty jarring to look at. During the scene where the dogs eat mushrooms and get high after doing so, the style does change from each of their perspectives, which looks neat for the most part. I especially like how the big therapy dog, no I don't know his name nor do I care to know, turns into a puppet. And Reggie and Bugs tripping moments look cool too, but then you have Mackie looking like a terrible Flash 2D animated character, and that was kind of a letdown, but the rest of the scene was pretty interesting. So yeah, the animation for this movie looks alright in most parts, but it can really be jarring in a good handful of shots. That's all I can say without spoiling the movie, so now it's time to go into spoilers, and if you don't want to see them, skip to this time frame shown on screen right now, because I am getting into spoilers in 3, 2, 1, NOW! Like I said earlier, I can't stand Bug, but he does have one good moment, and that is the scene where he and the rest of the gang are thrown into the pound. While in there, Bug talks about his life before becoming a stray, and how much his family used to love and take care of him. Until one day, the family's daughter accidentally stepped on his leg, and he quickly bites her in reaction. Even though that was also an accident, he gets kicked out and winds up on the streets. It's not a scene that necessarily made me feel emotional, but I thought it was a well-written scene, and probably one of the only good ones in the movie as a whole. And the ending where he does get adopted was admittedly cute. I also liked Reggie's ending, where he leaves Doug behind getting his revenge, and decides to dedicate his life to helping other strays, sort of like what Bug did for him when they first met. I also thought Maggie and the big therapy dog were okay for the most part, but their romance arc just feels so forced and forgettable. What, you expect me to feel invested in a love story that feels underdeveloped and pointless to the plot? I watched a bad talking dog movie against my will, not Madagascar 2. While that series isn't top tier either, it's at least funny, which is way more than what I can say about this movie. Yeah, so overall, Strays is a bad dog movie. Like, it's bad. The humor is as funny as Super Mario Logan, the characters range from okay to incredibly annoying, and the movie just feels very generic as a whole. 
I love Will Ferrell as an actor, but he was definitely in way better movies than this. This movie just hurts to look at, especially when you see all the masterpieces that Phil Lord and Christopher Miller worked on. If you want a good movie about a talking dog who swears, go watch Puss in Boots The Last Wish. If you want an actual mature and emotional movie starring a dog in general, go watch All Dogs Go to Heaven. These are way more worth your time, trust me. Heck, if you are a parent, then maybe go take your kid to see the new Paw Patrol movie. That may just be a super dog show for babies, but it will probably have more substance to it than this movie did. Overall, I give Strays a 3 out of 10. I can't decide if this movie is worse than Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken or not, but I most likely will by the time I rank all these movies next year, meaning I will have to suffer through these two abominations again, so I hope you all appreciate the lengths I, I will go to make content. Right now, the movie is not doing very good in the box office, and honestly, I wouldn't waste your money by going to see it in theaters. Now if you enjoyed this movie, I'm glad for you. Don't let my silly opinion change the way you feel about this movie if you enjoyed it and you're over the age of 12. But if you are that age or below, you'll probably have a good time with this movie. Anyways, let's take a look at our next animated film for this series. We still got it! Looks like your band-aids aren't behind you. Why, oh why, DreamWorks? Why are you just not doing good this year? I thought you had everything under control, you motherfuck!